What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode we got a super amazing war movie. Awesome movie. Probably won some awards. Yeah. Isn't this light just sitting right in the middle of the shot? Come on, Abel. See that? Movie magic. You move a light from literally the center of us to behind me and all of a sudden, voila. I'm still going to stare at myself the whole time though, I can't help it. You want to cover it? Dude, we got to do three of these. Let's go. Let's get to work. Why are these so hard to do? Oh, it no. takes so much energy. Because they take. It takes so a long, long time. It's yeah. like an hour of like legit putting a lot of work into it. All right, guys. Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. We are doing an episode on Jarhead Law of Return. So I didn't realize until just now that this is this anything to do with the first Jarhead? I don't believe so. So I've, I've only seen the first one, and I've seen like the the titles and the breakdowns of the ones that came after, and I don't think they have anything to do with the first Jarhead. I think it's in name only. I think they they completely ripped off Jarhead and then just took that name and drove it into the ground with these yeah. garbage ass movies. Yeah, I'm not excited to see this one. Yeah. I don't have high <laughs> hopes, but so we'll see what happens. It's so bad. But you guys watched it, you know whether you like it or not. Sometimes you guys like movies that we don't. I didn't like Terminal List. Kurt loved Terminal List. You guys love Terminal List. So the thing is, check this out. He could not like it, I could like it, and we're still friends. <laughs> it's okay. It's like, oh, fuck you, you're stupid. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> How could you like that shit show? Oh, man. Anyway, some of you guys get so serious about <laughs> the movies that you like. <laughs> it's fucking intense. Like, guys, remember, you didn't make that movie, so it's not personal. Yeah. <laughs> it's not your movie, right? But this one sucks major butt, and we're going to tell you why. And then we're going to evaluate some scenes and see how just terrible of a job they did. Pinpoint the location of the hostage. Johnson and Razor provided backup and engaged the enemy. After locating the hostage, the team cleared the room, making sure everything was safe. It was declared deceased upon arrival, along with Staff Sergeant Stephen Paulson. That whole intro of him just like dead staring, like yeah. parade rest sitting, this is how the event took place. The, and then at some point we missed it, but it was like the a grenade came in and he's like, the grenade went off and that's when shit hit the fan. Or the, uh, the grenade went boom. Or something <laughs> stupid. It's just like, who sits there at parade rest just giving a speech about how things went down? Yeah, that was dumb. Like, they, there was bad like, dialogue. Just the dialogue's weird. terrible. The, like, the, the, the B-roll of the shooting sequence isn't bad. Right. But just have that shooting sequence. Like, we could put two and two together. This guy, this fucking clearly, like, button-up suit white guy is not supposed to be there. So when all these operators go and get him, I, I could fully understand that it's a rescue operation. Yeah. You know, it's like, or it's a high-value target of some kind. Like, I don't need you to give me a play-by-fucking-play of everything that's going on. Well, again, you know, bad movies have to set the tone that this is going to be a bad movie. So right, right away. right off the bat, they're like, hey, don't this, get your hopes too yeah, high. This movie's going to It's going to be a shitty movie. This movie's going <laughs> to suck. We wrote this whole script on a napkin, hammered, last night. And one of us spilled our beer on it, so we lost <laughs> half of it anyways. So. <laughs> we don't even know what half of it read. So we just told him, locked him in a room and said, you know, do a beers and breakdowns on this scene. <laughs> and that's what he came up with. Probably the best small unit tactician I've ever had. Special warfare operations is paying decent money for guys like you. I can make a few phone calls. I didn't sign up for money, sir. That's the wrong metric to measure what we do. <laughs> I'll stick it up. What did he say? <laughs> the cheesiest fucking lame line I've ever heard in my life. He says, he goes, he's retiring from special operations in Marsoc or whatever, or in the Marines. And he was like, I could line you up with a good gig after you get out. It does really well, pays well. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't do this for money, sir. That's the wrong metric for what we do. Oh, God. That's the wrong. What? Get out of here. You, you fucking loser. You're about to retire. So you do need money. And this whole cog in the wheel that you were as special operations is about to spit your ass out. Mm -hmm. And all you have left is whatever career you pick. Like, and your career's gone. It's done. People don't care what you did. Yeah, people have no fucks about the fact that you were special operations. Nobody cares. 
Once you get out into the civilian land, it's a whole new ball game. You could be like, oh, I was green bread. And they'd be like, oh, that's awesome. Is that like a, what is that? Is that a Navy SEAL? <laughs> Dude, I've been told that. Like, I told some we we're like hanging out at a bar one time. I'm like, oh, what do you do? I was like, oh, I just, I'm a Green Beret and, this, you know, we're Green Berets. And they're like, oh, cool. Is that like Navy SEALs? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah just yeah, like that. Sure. Dude, one time, <laughs> just kind of random, we were doing the uh, Master Mountaineer course. So the, the winter mountaineering in uh, Colorado and Vail, on Vail Mountain. Um, and we are all, we all had to wear our, like, our, uh, multi-cam like winter uniforms mm-hmm. they wouldn't let us wear regular clothes so we stood out like a fucking sore thumb on the mountains and we're on a ski lift one time and we're going and it's me my buddy and then two civilians were with us and they're like oh so you guys in the military and we're like yeah we're in the army and he was like yeah we're green berets and it was the same thing he was like what's that and he was like you know kind of like the seals and just to end the conversation <laughs> yeah. and he's like oh really you guys work with seals and we're like yeah actually there's a couple in the class with us and like oh dude that's so cool and we're like shut the fuck up like, yeah. push this guy yeah. off the fucking lip <laughs> 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 boop <laughs> call the seals to pick your ass yeah, up right? it was him and his girlfriend just knock him <laughs> off and like hey so <laughs> that's how it goes though like all these guys and like they don't realize it when they're still in like a lot of guys are in the military they think they're drinking their own Kool-Aid, like, oh, I'm a Green Beret. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, all right, dude, just wait till you get out. Yep. I don't care if you had a career that was one year long or fucking 50 years long. No one gives a shit. So have fun retiring and be like, I was a 20-year vet. Like, Watch how many people give a shit yeah. and watch how many doors open just because you retired as a, a Green Beret or a SEAL. It, it doesn't happen. You still have to put in the same amount of work. You still have to bust your ass. And you still have to prove that you're the right person for the job regardless of your background. So it's a shock, and, and this guy's about to find out, and he's like, it's the wrong metric this to measure what metric. we do. Like, okay. Oh, you motherfucker. We're not gonna do this again, are we, Benny? We are, we are, we're gonna do... So these two fuckhead pilots <laughs> walk up and their their crew chief, whatever, I don't know how the Air Force like designates their jobs, but these guys come up to take their helmets and they salute them and this fucking cunt actor thinks <laughs> it's a good idea to slap him in the yeah. face. Like, yeah, Paulie, how He's you like, doing? Hey, hey, thanks, you little bitch. Bam. Yeah. It's like Take my helmet. Take my helmet. Like you disrespectful son of a bitch. Like if I ever met this actor. I would fucking slap him in the face like that. Yeah. I, I'll tell you right now, you actor, whoever the fuck you are, because no one knows because you're a shitty actor. <laughs> if I ever fucking see you in a bar, I'm gonna slap you in the face the same uh, way that you slapped this guy. I promise you. That's, I don't. I don't foresee that ever happening because these like they rely so heavily on their crew chiefs and on the crew that takes care fuck of their planes. No, they would never do somebody. that. How disrespectful do you got to be to slap another grown ass man yeah. and a soldier that's beneath you? Oh like, yeah, that's like the, you're the pilot. He's your he's you know whatever. You're clearly position. an officer. You're an he's officer. Enlisted. He's enlisted, and you're gonna slap him in the face. Like I understand that you, the actor doesn't always understand what's going on. They're trying to create banter, and you know, but slapping someone in the face like that is so fucking disrespectful that it just pisses me off that they left that in the movie. And you know who this guy is? The guy that the son of the senator that's mm-hmm. the pilot. Oh fuck, he was in <clears throat> Casper. Remember Casper the Friendly Ghost? Yeah. Yeah, he was the kid from Casper. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, his career didn't go anywhere. No, he's had a struggle of a career, dude. This has been rough. Uh, and then whoever this other guy is, I can't. I hope to God one day. One day the FNG Academy leads me to his front of him. I'm going to go pop, pop, pop. <laughs> just the same way. Oh, you're the jarhead guy? You're the jarhead hey. guy? Hey, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. He's going to be like, you can't do that. I'm like, I know. Remember that movie you did? It? It's a dickhead thing to do, isn't it? What the fuck? 
No, but my cock does. No, but my cock does. <laughs> Muy <mujeres> caliente. <laughs> Sarge, what did he oh say? Oh, my God. You don't know what hot means in Spanish, you dumb fuck? <laughs> like, you've never watched Dora the Explorer one time? You don't know what fucking caliente means? And then the other part oh, was Sarge. my cock is, so that's English. Dude, this is what we were talking about. When Lone Survivor got military banner so yeah. right, this is the other side of that it's so like, cheesy and it's corny. so cheesy and corny it's like you can't how many languages you speak you ask uh, fucking 90 percent of green berets even though we go to language school and they'd be like one dickhead and you know right, English. Yeah. like you don't speak french like how many languages you speak my cock speaks spanish <laughs> like what the fuck it's just so terrible yeah it's it's bad banter cheesy it's just ass so like, banter and every it's not single genuine yeah every single war movie they know it's like oh military guys they talk shit to each other yeah so we gotta have one of those scenes in there yeah and then 99 percent of them just make it the most awkward shit on the planet it's like abel wrote these scenes yeah <laughs> <laughs> one of my notes was that they should have called this movie something like black ops and have steven seagal in it <laughs> 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 this is a Steven yeah. Seagal rated movie. I'm surprised Steven Seagal isn't in this movie. Right. They were probably like, hey, you want to be in this movie? He's like, can I sit? And they were like, no. <laughs> and he's like, I'm out. Fuck it. See, that's a good metric, too, because you know going into a Steven Seagal movie, it's about to be hot fucking garbage. Yeah. It's so, like, like, you already know it. You go into it thinking, okay. It's probably going to be funner because then you can just laugh at how shitty yeah. it is. If you see the first Jarhead, which I thought was a good movie, oh, the and then you come into this awesome. yeah. thinking it's going to be anything like that, you're going to be sorely disappointed. That's what happened to me. I thought this was going to be Jarhead 2. Oh. So I came into it, it was like, I know it won't be Jarhead because it's not Jake Gyllenhaal and it's not these amazing actors that have... What's the dude's name? That His partner that was a sniper? I mean, he's in like fucking everything. I don't know. Ever. Wasn't Jamie Foxx in there too? Yep, Jamie Foxx was in it. Jamie Foxx just had a badass movie that dropped about zombies, which was, I was watching it earlier. Yeah, that was good. That shit was fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. that was good. They they took it corny, but in a way that was awesome. It there's was there's so a badass. way to do a corny yeah. movie well, you yeah. know? And it's it's by not portraying yourself as a serious movie. Yeah. Which that's fun does. with it. Yeah. yeah. And that Jamie Foxx movie is sick. We, maybe we'll do a Beers and Breaks on that. That'd be pretty cool. Because that yeah. one was badass. Good shot. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, dude. You got this, you got <laughs> Casper's homie in a fucking cornfield with like 10 fucking Ninja Turtle Foot Clan <laughs> shooting at him. And he's just like, and why is it always, why do they always look like the Foot Clan? Like, that's funny, they do look like the bro, Foot <laughs> I said, I mentioned that before in another. Beers breakdowns that they look like the Foot Clan because they were all black. Yeah, but these motherfuckers yeah, straight they up got ripped the, it the off. Headband and they everything. They got the headband. They did the face mask. Like, they all have glasses on. Like you're waiting for Michelangelo and the crew Bro, to just come and out. Just get them back, <laughs> flipping, <laughs> knocking one out, and then they go, oh, and then they go eat pizza. <laughs> and then they eat pizza. And then this guy, he's got like ten dudes shooting fully auto AK seven six two at him through a cornfield. Right. And he's just dodging bullets. <laughs> one guy, what was that? A, a PKM or what was on yeah, the back of the truck? Yeah, he's got a full full machine gun, seven six two machine gun. The I, sheer volume of rounds doing, coming through that bro, that maze, like he'd be done. He'd be so dead. All like, you'd have to do is go like this. Yeah. And he would clear. You can't outrun that. Yeah. It radius. doesn't matter. These guys aren't aiming. They're. No. With that amount of bullets coming down, this guy would be fucked. And that whole cornfield would be, like, chopped down. And he's just, like, headshot, <laughs> runs over here. Ah, like, you can't see the fucking corn husk <laughs> moving as he's going through it. And he would just light that whole thing up. And he would be in a million pieces. Well, maybe he got lucky. <laughs> and he's just, like, headshot, headshot, headshot. I know. I like, know. I don't know if you guys know this, but pilots aren't known for their shooting skills. No. How yeah. often do you think a pilot goes through yeah. a flat range? No. <laughs> like, they in need... basic or whatever, like, their basic officer course, maybe. Maybe once a year to recall. Yeah, probably, like, just as much as, like, uh, support MOS. Because they're support MOS. They're support. Yeah. They're not infantrymen. They're not special forces. They're pilots. I they doubt. fly planes. Their concern is getting enough hours in so they could fly, fly planes and, you know, whatever. If they're 160, do their job. Their job isn't to shoot people in the face. Most pilots probably have no idea what to do with a, a, a gun or it would look like a Glock, I think. Yeah. Like how to? I don't know how to shoot. And he's this. just like headshot, headshot, headshot. And then he's reload. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so stupid, man. As soon as I saw this part, and then he goes to run away, and then you just see the corn stalks going. Pff, pff, pff. Oh, now they move. Yeah, now they move. But before, <laughs> them bitches like this, and he was just like, huh? <laughs> oh, what the what is, is that? that? I have no idea. It's, it's like a potato gun. It does look like a potato. <laughs> All right, bro. So the Foot Clan just shot a fucking rocket out of a potato gun and shot your ass 10 feet up in the air. And all you have is a ringing in your ears. Are you fucking kidding me? She's like, no! It's so loud. Clearly, like, it landed close enough where it, like, threw him like it that. It launched him. Like, There's going to be dead. other issues going on other than just a, a slight headache. Yeah, it's like people, like, Hollywood doesn't understand how explosions work. The thing that's carrying the explosive goes like this. Yeah. And we call that shrapnel. <laughs> and that, besides the force of the explosion, all that shrapnel does really bad things to your body. So if a fucking, uh, any kind of rocket lands near you or grenade or anything like that, it's going to fuck you up and you're going to be dead and you're going to be full of holes and you're going to be guppying for air as you bleed the fuck out. Yeah. You're not going to do a front flip and then go, oh, my ears, it's so loud. Like, come on, Casper. They didn't teach you shit in that movie. Like, Casper didn't teach you anything about tactics. <laughs> this guy hasn't acted in a movie in, like, 25 years. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I don't know, guys, but I think I'm going to have more than ears ringing <laughs> after you, you launch a rocket at from out of, out of a uh, potato gun at me. And I wish, like, as a Bravo, I should be able to say what that fucking ridiculous-looking grenade launcher uh Whatever rocket launcher, you recoilless. I'm sure it's some kind of recoilless uh, rifle, but I, I don't know what the fuck it is. It might not even be real. It probably is just some PVC it's pipe painted potato. black. Yeah, yeah. It's like you'll know. Let us know in the comments if you know what that is. I, I've never. I don't know what that is. Um, I think the double barrel one is that. That's like the anti tank or the anti aircraft, anti -aircraft one. ones. <laughs> Potentially, who knows? Yeah. So just so you guys know, like 18 Bravos. There's different types of 18 Bravos. There's some that like really really love guns to the point where they obsess over every caliber every bullet every um like uh, one of my teammates dude he knew the trajectory of every bullet he mm -hmm. knew the the rifling he knew exactly the specs of like all of it but that's what he enjoyed at home like that is his passion as a hobby so like work as a green beret doesn't require you to know all that stuff so some bravos they eat up all the data they know all the data mm -hmm. i never fucking I never jerked off to gun magazines. Like, I love guns. I like having them, but my M4 works really good. I put 5.56 five, in it. I can shoot <laughs> it pretty well. I don't know the di like the 10 different types. So in our ammo locker in Afghanistan, I would walk in and be like, the fuck is all this? There would be like 30 different types of 5.56. Five, like, I got like fucking hollow point. I got uh, 50 cal rounds that look like they're armor piercing. That got fucking metal spikes coming out of them. I'm like, let's take this like, and shoot That it. looks cool. That was badass. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it does, but that shit looks badass. Like, like whoever Bravo was at our fob before we got there was a gun nerd, bro. He yeah. had 10 different types of 5.56. Five, That's funny. And every time we started to switch up the types of 5.56, five, we would have gun issues. Yeah. We'd have jams. So that's when I was like, listen, fuck all this, like, you know, high speed, fucking low drag ammo. Just load up your fucking green tip. So that's my yeah. advice to all my guys is like, just load up your fucking green tip. Because every time you go to the range, green tip goes bang and all this other shit goes click. <laughs> so fuck right. all this high speed stuff, load up the green tip and shoot what you know is going to go bang. That's funny you say that because I always felt the same way about Charlie's. Like you have some Charlie's that are construction Charlie's. Like I, I really enjoyed the construction phase. Um, and then you had some Charlies that were demo Charlies or explosive Charlies. Like, I enjoyed that, too. That was a lot of fun. But, you know, my whole background, I was always building things and stuff like that. So I consider myself more of a construction Charlie. Yeah. But then you've got other ones that just nerd out over explosives and oh, stuff I like that. I, I loved, as a Bravo, my favorite thing more than, favorite thing, all of Special Forces, my favorite thing was creating charges. Because, like, I didn't have it's, to. It is fun. Dude, I didn't, and I wasn't a Charlie, so I didn't have to. It takes all the pressure off me. Yeah. I don't have to know minimum safe distances. Yeah. I don't have to do any of the, <laughs> the calculations. I could just say, I want to make mine look like this. Yeah. 
Like, I want a flappy stick that I can open up, and then I stick it like this, and it blows all this side down. And then the Charlie would go, okay, well, let's do the math. You should probably have three strips of uh, deck cord that go through that. And I was like, thanks, man. <laughs> You're like, three? What about six? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going to double that, but I appreciate you. Uh, I remember one range we went to, We it was one of those where we just had a bunch of shit that we had to get rid of. And so we're all out there. Oh, yeah. We're all out there. We're making, like, C4 dicks. (laughs) So you're, like, cocking balls made out of C4, and we're going, like, blowing them up. (laughs) The last fun time you'll ever have. It's it's angry Play-Doh, and you got a bunch of, like, old (laughs) SF dudes playing with Play-Doh. You're going to make a dick. (laughs) Dude, I love that. Man, that makes me sad that I didn't do a a C4 dildo. Oh, Oh, you missed an opportunity. I would make... This is probably too graphic for this, but I would make the balls like this, and then the cock come out of it, but I would want it to stick like that, so I could stick <laughs> it on like, the wall. So that as it sticker. sits there, it's just slowly <laughs> bending down, going flaccid. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if you wanted a little charge, it'd be a white dick. <laughs> if you really wanted to fuck it up, you put the black on <laughs> It's just the black mamba hanging oh, on. It's like God. you guys got to get back. Dude. You got to get back on this one. This mm. is the this is the full send of the, the C four dicks. Be like, bring me the black mamba. Oh, oh no, Sarge, are you sure about that? <laughs> Give me the damn black Give mamba. Me the black mamba. <laughs> You're like, oh fuck. <laughs> oh shit, that was funner this in, than this entire movie. <laughs> Holy cheesy dialogue just never ends in this movie. Yeah. He's like, and then he's like, have you ever heard of lying? He's like, are you married? He's like, yes. Yes. Do you have children? We got one on the way. (laughs) What's its name? Noah. Where's your address? (laughs) (laughs) He's like, this is my address. (laughs) What's your social security number? Hey, what else can we ask this man? <laughs> like, he's telling us everything. I don't know what to do. What I'm is at- your Facebook password? <laughs> <laughs> I've had eight of once. Just keep going. <laughs> How many men did you come with? Twelve. <laughs> like, Where are they? <laughs> By the oh, end of it, God. he's just like, okay, man. We're done. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. You've been really helpful. <laughs> this is the most intel we've ever gotten. I actually quite like you, but <laughs> the boss says you must die. <laughs> I'm going to slap you with this rope a couple of times. <laughs> and then go get some coffee. It's very nice to meet you. <laughs> I'll hit you up on Facebook since I have your password. We'll be friends. Oh, man. Goodbye. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Not once. And he was just like, tell anything you want to know. He's like, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you and then he's like you're wearing a mask like this motherfucker won't kill you if he's wearing a mask you're right you're right I'll take it off this is the face of war <laughs> like somebody read this script and was like this is the face of war yeah, yeah that's, that's a good gonna one. get him that's, that's gonna, gonna get him that's gonna get all those fucking military guys hyped up <laughs> this is the face of war the food clan is coming for you <laughs> master shredder is on his way and you are all fucked it's the ooze uh, shredder post ooze shredder there you go yeah remember that oh, fucking yeah. when he punches his way out after the ooze comes in is that out of the trash pile or something different so he uh, cause I remember the first one he gets covered up by all the trash and then his like hand comes through and he's like Aah. yeah that's when he dies though right yeah cause then he, he was that because then he gets the ooze he gets that big one and then he starts punching all the posts down yeah, boom, yeah, yeah, boom, yeah, yeah. That's boom, after that. Boom. Yeah, I remember And then that. the Ninja Turtles jump off, and you're like, why did it take us so long? They're turtles. Like, you could swim. <laughs> but they were like, we got to go to the water. Uh, like, you're turtles, bro. You're almost fish. <laughs> you're like fish with legs. Like, how would that not come to your mind? Poke your arms and legs in and yeah, just just like, wait till you get to the water, and you're good. <laughs> 
Dude, I love that movie. Ninja Dude, Turtles. My, is who is your favorite? Fun. Michelangelo. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! I always said you can tell a lot about a person by their favorite Ninja Turtle. And mine's Michelangelo, too. My second favorite, though, is uh, Raphael. I liked how angry he was all the time. We, we gotta ask Abel. I, I peg Abel as like a... Donatello. Donatello. Yeah, so I'm gonna say, <laughs> fucking yeah. loser. <laughs> Just sitting in the back, he's like... You guys can't do this. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> we can't <laughs> post this. You can't say that. We're not <laughs> posting that. I'm gonna edit it out. I have all your kids up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to get banned off YouTube. <laughs> like, fuck it. Whatever, man. Just let it happen. Let it fly. What's the worst that could happen? Jail. Jail would probably be the worst that could happen. It could be, yeah. yeah. It'd be pretty bad. <laughs> I don't want to go to jail. No. I'm too pretty. <laughs> What a stupid fucking scene. You go into what is literally the best case scenario for a pair of knots. Yeah, and they white light it. And they white light it. Why would you I don't you do understand. That? Switch on your white light. Switch on your white light. We want to get shot. Like, if you're going... Think about being the bad guy. And you see a bunch of white lights coming in. Yeah. All you got to do is start aiming for them white lights. You know it's attached to the rifle. And you know that they're holding the rifle. They've so, all got nods. They've all got lasers. Yeah. Use it to your advantage. Use your fucking tools. The whole point of nods is so you can own the night. You could have it completely pitch black and go in, and while they're looking around trying to figure out where you're at, you already put two in their head. And now they're just walking around with all this extra weight on their helmet for, for no, no reason. reason. Because you're going to white light anyway. White light is... What the fuck? We tried... I don't know where this like whole like fucking running and then white occasional white light shit came in. But we tried that, and it's a nightmare. I don't know if that's some shit CAG does or Did what. you have nods on it, son? What we, do you... No, we didn't drop our nods. Okay. So the whole idea is that we're nods down, so no nod. We just did it in training to, to try it. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is that we're trying to clear a house from one end to the next. And we, what we don't want is someone from the outside of the house, like a sniper or an ambush, to be able to, probably a sniper, but to be able to track our movement throughout the house based on our white light. Mm -hmm. So as they see different rooms light up, they know where we're at. So what we would do is white light to get an, a snapshot of the room and then get to like 10, 15 feet, white light, blast, just one blast of white light and then keep moving, blast of white light and keep moving. So what it would look like from the outside is snap a white light, snap a white light, snap a white light, but they, they can't track you. Or you could just not and use nods. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the. I'm not the sure like what that. what the reasoning. But I've seen I, and I watched a movie recently where I saw him do it. I don't know if it was in Terminal List or something, but there was some kind of show or some movie recently where they were like where they did that and it was like snap a white light and then they would clear. Yeah. You're essentially clearing based on memory at that point. I mean, I could see the the benefit if you didn't have nods. Yeah, that right. makes sense. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'd be interested Which, to see. We just tried it, and then instantly we were like, no. Yeah. Like, if you really, really practice it, maybe you can get good at it. And I could see that there's just having that skill set in your, you know, bag of tools is good to have. But it was extremely difficult because you're uh, essentially you're white lighting, getting a mental picture of what the room looks like, mm -hmm. and having to clear all the way up to that point and then white light. So, right, what, so you're like trying to step over things that you yeah, saw or around yeah. things. and yeah, So if someone pops up in that dark period, you're hoping that you, you can't see anything. It's just weird. It's a weird thing. I don't know. Seems like a good way to even the playing field. Yeah. It's, instead it's, of having that superiority, you know? Yeah. So I don't, maybe there's somebody that's used that technique before. Drop a comment down below if you, or you've seen something where people have used it and it makes sense. Um, but we tried it and it was fucking difficult. So, I don't know. But just running around white light, you're being tracked the whole time. People could see where you're going. They see where you're looking. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, if I'm white lighting like this, if I'm sitting there hiding in a corner, I could decide when I want to shoot you. You see it coming, on, you're like, okay. Yeah. As soon as it passes, wow. <laughs> yeah, when it's like, I know you're looking over there. You're looking at something. I know what you're looking at. So if you're not looking at me, bah, bah, bah. You know, it's yeah. like, 
I could, it's just white light is dangerous and you need to use it sparingly. And these guys have nods yet they're still running white light. I think it was just, it's just this movie's stupid. It's like a fucking maze in here. Yeah, shit, different day. You should sprint. Split the risk. Doris. All right, so then the guys go into this area and they're like, oh, it's amazing here. And then some chick gets on and says, you should split. You should spread. Split the risk. Yeah. The fuck? There's a, a fucking ton of reasons to do multi-cell, multi-breach, and multi-cell clearance operations. Not one of them is to split the risk. <laughs> what? Like, that doesn't even make any sense. You should split. You should spread and split the risk. Okay. Cool. Like, I value my life too. You know? like, <laughs> I think that we should all try to go home, <laughs> not split the risk. So fuck That's those, funny. you know, someone gets screwed. Like it was just a stupid thing to say to be like, spread to split the risk. Yeah. Like maybe, hey, you know, spread the split, go multi-cell in order to do a faster clearance operation. Just have a better reason. Yeah. Reason. Have a better reason for splitting your, your group up. You could just be like, hey, it'll be faster if you guys split. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, Team A, Team Alpha take uh, West, you know, Team Bravo take East, so that way, and then meet back in the middle, and then you that way you have a plan. So you split, you go, you know, as far East and West as you can, as far out, and then as soon as you start coming back, then, because you need to understand the the difficulty of multi-cell clearance operations. It's extremely dangerous. Yeah. So we've done, in, in training, we've done a lot, and in combat we did some, but with uh, Afghans being with us, that was it's terrifying. Dangerous. It's yeah. fucking terrifying. <laughs> but you do multi-cell, so you need to understand where you're gonna meet. So mm -hmm. if we're gonna start on opposite sides and meet in the middle, then as soon, we're clearing, we're flowing, and as soon as we start getting closer to the center, you start to slow down. And then you, your awareness starts to go up because you know that at some point you're coming in contact with Green Berets again. So then you're going to start looking for each other. Do I see lights flashing? Do I see chem lights from rooms that they've cleared already? So if we if we do a, um, a clear, you know, and this room's clear, we'll pop a green chem light and drop it in the room. So that way other teams could see that we've already cleared that room and we don't re-clear rooms. Mm -hmm. So things like that. So you start to slow down as you get closer as a multi-cell. And then you can start calling out eagle, 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 and you don't shoot each other. So if you want to split their cell like that, you know, they need to have some kind of plan. Like, hey, clear out, and then we'll meet back in the middle. So that way, as soon as they start coming back, they slow down, and they start being aware that they are going to have their other cell coming back at them. And they call out eagle, eagle, or whatever their um, call sign is to let them know that they're friendly. And then they have a plan. But if you just split and you're like, Good luck, bro. Yeah, right? That's dangerous. That's dangerous. I've actually seen that go bad one time. Luckily, it was also in training, but... Yeah, so my team wasn't running at the time, so it was in a shoot house. Mm -hmm. So it's a, you know, a house that's designed for, you know, CQB training. Which has always got a catwalk on the top. Yep, so. so the catwalk is just like an area where you can watch and observe from above. And so we were up on the catwalk watching it, and the team was going through doing split-ups. And then it got to a point where there was a long hallway, and they came together, and they got into Ooh. a prolonged firefight with each other. Like to the point where everybody's like, "What the fuck?" And and then oh, where were you guys shooting? It was sim rounds. Thank so God. So the, the paint rounds. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So it was the paint rounds. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, not not for well, real. We've done we've done multi cell with live rounds. Oh really? Yeah, in training. Oh we wow. Did live rounds. So one of the final courses in our, you, what do you guys have? A green platoon or whatever? Where we didn't know. I know some groups do. So we had the guy that ran ours was the Criff Sergeant Major. Mm -hmm. And the guy was a badass. He made us do fucking parkour, which sucked. I hated that. <laughs> this motherfucker has jumping off like 10 foot ledges and doing front rolls out of it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to break some shit. It's a good way to shit. get hurt. <laughs> yeah. But he was he was cool. But he his training led up all the way to max, dude. Under nods, multi-cell, multi-breach, live rounds, Oof. with breach, with breach, with the, um, what's the tool that cuts, the cutter tool? Oh, the quickie saw? The quickie saw. Mm -hmm. So now we're having the quickie saw. Targets inside, so we're shooting through the metal because he wanted to, he wanted people to know that when you have like you know the metal grates that they'll use to block doors in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. he was like, we would get to it, see a target and shoot, and then we would try to quickie saw it, and he would like time out, check this out, check your target, 
and you're like you could see the motherfucker because it's the the grate the metal grate right and but when you were shooting sparks were coming up and shit they were deflecting the rounds we didn't hit them at all so we were shooting and then getting out the quickie saw to cut open the the oh, grate and the guy was still alive yeah so he was like see you got to be careful because you don't know what your fucking rounds are going to penetrate and what's going to get on target. Right. But it was I was actually scared during that training operation yeah. because live rounds, he's they're shooting, clearing while we're shooting through metal grates for the first time and a quickie saw is going off. Yeah. So under knots, fucking <clears throat> sparks flying. That's scary. Live rounds. Dude, he took it to the max, dude. <laughs> it was it was a ballsy training operation. It went smooth and it was good, but yeah. It got me nervous, and it made me feel the closest I've ever felt in training to war. So, that's cool. I mean, that's good yeah, training. Honestly. Great training. It was that, phenomenal training. I w I'm not talking bad about it at all. It was phenomenal, yeah. but it was it was scary. He was able to replicate fear in training, and that's real training. I remember the first time doing live rounds under nods in a, a shoot house, and the same scary, thing. Dude. It's like if you take a step in front of your buddy or yeah. something, like you never know what's going to happen. So it, it brings that realism into it. Yeah. It really does. It makes you, you, you always think twice or you you make sure that you're positively identifying your target before you squeeze that trigger. Yeah. So it was, it was fun. It was his team that got in the fight with each other. <laughs> with the paint rounds. Whoops. <laughs> Could you imagine? I'd be like, just say Eagle. And if they're like, Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, like, all right. Yeah, like, it went on for long enough where we're where everybody upstairs was like, oh, fuck, that's not good. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, bro, say something. Like, hey, don't we have... Did they know they had another cell inside the... Oh, yeah, they, they, was, they were the same team. It was one ODA. <laughs> that's why you just call out something. You have a call sign, like, eagle, eagle, fucking friendly, friendly. Like, yeah. don't say friendly, because you want it to be disguised. So ours was always eagle, eagles, but... Did you guys... Were you eagle? I probably that seems like what everybody uses yeah. it's in all the movies it's just common it's, things yeah. like eagle eagle or just say whatever so you know that they're not going to be like eagle eagle or if they're like it fucking I don't want to make fun of it but in some kind of accent you know like <laughs> ah almost got me I remember <laughs> my buddy our, our Delta this fucking idiot he's a big dumb idiot um, <laughs> we were doing it was the final FTX of Sephalic and so there's Sephalic like, that's what we were doing yeah that's what we were doing too yeah. So there's this mock village at First Group where it's just all, you know, Connex Village or whatever. Real quick, we should explain Safalk. So Safalk is, what is it? Special, Special Forces? Forces Advanced Urban Operations Combat Course or something like that. Yeah, so Safalk is like a, it's like mm. a really well, well done, depending on group, I'm sure. Mm. But ours was run by this uh, Chris Sergeant Major in 10th Group, um, and it was, it was phenomenal. It was fucking phenomenal. It was some of the best training I've ever had. Yeah, you start off slow. So we started off doing SOCP, which is Special Operations yep. Combatives Program. Yep. A couple of days of like MMA, BJJ, whatever type stuff. But you keep your... SOCP yeah. is another one. Yeah. It's awesome because you keep your weapon on when you mm -hmm. get in fights and stuff. And you, you learn what it's like to fight with kit on and yeah. you got a weapon strapped to yeah. you and how to create space, get to your, your either your sidearm or mm -hmm. your knife or whatever. Then you go to like flat range. Then you start moving laterally. Then you start moving in depth. Then you get to like throwing parkour and shit over <laughs> like parkour range. Like Ours, we had dude, we were like crawling up ladders, jumping over walls, and then doing sniping spots, and then moving on. So down. that was like your stress shoot. Yeah. So we did stress shoots. We had to climb up on like a conex, but nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. And then like it progresses, and you then you get into like doing shoot houses, and then you throw in like breaching, so demo or quickie saws, and then you go to like shooting at night and all that. So it was awesome progression. Dude, phenomenal. I almost got shot in the face in Safalic. Oof, that's not good. Under nods, under nods, I told a story a bunch, but we were, so we had pop-up targets, live pop-up targets, and then we had a, a VTAC barrier. Mm -hmm. So, and they kept switching up the team, the groups that would go. I think this is where it got a little dangerous. Yeah. Because they kept switching up the people. So they would pop up. A lot of us chose to run to the VTAC barrier and then start taking them down from the VTAC. Well, we switched groups. One of these old infantry guys, the barriers popped up. I went to run to the VTAC, and he just started lighting them up. Pop, pop, Ooh. pop. And I go, wow. And I was like, oh, and we're under nods. So I could just see the flash right here. Damn. And I was like, dude, you almost shot me in the fucking face. And he was like, good thing you're paying attention. Fuck. That was it. That's all I got. That's all I got from him. Good thing you're paying attention. Good thing you were. I was a new guy, and he didn't give a fuck. He was like, well, good thing you're paying attention. <laughs> like you're not gonna even lose a ounce of sleep or the fact you almost killed a fucking guy you know no nothing okay yeah, okay cool i'm gonna lose sleep over Keep the moving. fact that 
I almost died in training, which was super fucking lame for yeah. me. Like, I signed up to go <laughs> to war, and I almost got shot in the face in training. Oh, no. By my own guy, you know, and he was just like, man, pay attention. And then he told me, he was like, hey, he's like, I'm infantry. When you have a target, you shoot. That's it. And then you move to cover, and then you re-engage. Hmm. And I was like, that's fine, but share that knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so the FTX, I was in charge of the, the vehicles outside. And so, like, we're getting all the vehicles into position as like they're, like, security. moving through. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, you know, once it comes time to Xfil, we're going to mm -hmm. roll up and pick everybody up. And so we're sitting there. Oh, you're staging the vehicles for Xfil. Basically, yeah, okay. at this point. And we're watching the, the building, and we're seeing everybody go in and all, like, the muzzle flashes. And then all of a sudden, I just see everybody pour out of the building. Like, dudes are jumping out of the landslide. second floor. Landslide. landslide. Yeah. And we're like, I'm like, oh, fuck, must have been a landslide, right? Yeah. And then come to find out after we gathered everybody up. Everybody's like giving my Delta shit. And uh, so his name is Jamie. I forget what he came across. He found something in the building which was not part of the scenario or whatever and uh -huh. just called landslide, which is like landslide is when like it's like a booby trap or something that's going to take down the whole building. Which gets us to Terminalist in the cave in the first episode. He calls landslide and nobody moves. Did that happen? Yes. He, he said landslide, sir. And he goes... And then looks around and like they stay. He called landslide. Uh, landslide is one of those things like when you call it, it's like you're gone. Everyone's no matter what. gone. Yes. That's why I was like, what the fuck? He said landslide. <laughs> when you say landslide, there's no more discussion. It's like this place is about to come down. Someone says yeah, landslide. Get the fuck out. You heard what he said. Guys were jumping out of second floor windows in training. Yeah. That's what landslide means. That's how serious landslide, landslide is. Landslide's like, let's say this room right now, my office. I have a door. And then I have downstairs and then out the front door and I have a window. Landslide is window. Yeah. It's window or my ass is getting disintegrated by an explosive. <laughs> and my fucking better chance of survival is that window. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but it's, it just pissed me off because he was like, landslide. <laughs> I got to go back and watch that because I didn't, <laughs> I don't remember that part of that awesome award winning show. It didn't win a fucking award. It, not yet it didn't. This is the most casual, chill gunfight I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> there is no intensity whatsoever in this gunfight. <laughs> it's literally a bunch of people standing there with blanks, going ta 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 ta. Oh, run! Ta 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 ta. I'm it's shooting. Like you spent all this money to have things blowing up to make this movie, and all you get is a bunch of fucking dum dums going. Ta -ta -ta. You don't get any any ta -ta -ta. like intensity or feeling from nothing. It, you know? Nothing. There's no fear of those bullets. It's like when we saw uh, Lone Survivor. Mm. The way that was shot was like so like oh, it was like you were so there. Intense. It's yeah. like you're just like ah, uh, and on this it's just like okay. This is like, ta-ta-ta, oh no, ta-ta-ta, yeah. run, ah, ta-ta-ta, ta 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 This is a paintball game. This is a game of paintball. I don't even think it's that it's serious. It's like a game That's of true. laser tag. Yeah, this is a game of laser tag, and Lone Survivor <laughs> is a real fucking mission. I love that fucking movie, dude. The way they say so, snap, and then yeah. that fucking whap, and he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. His adrenaline's pumping, but he knows his hand's fucked. But what's the alternative? Sit there and bitch about your hand yeah. or keep fucking fighting so you could try to survive yep. your ordeal. And you're just in it with him. You're just like, oh, yeah. oh, oh. like fuck this. That's a gunfight. That's what a gunfight feels like. It's terrifying. Sometimes you're winning and then you're losing and then you're winning. And that's what it is. It's not this fucking laser tag experience of like, ha, 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 ha. Those are blanks. There's yeah. nothing happening. There's I'm no an actor. consequence. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just going to stand here. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's so stupid. I hope that somehow these reviews could influence Hollywood to do a fucking better job. <laughs> and not, not call us. Some people put in the comments like, oh, you guys should... Uh, what is it when you... A technical advisor? advisor? You guys should advise on movies. No. I don't want to fucking advise on movies. They could suck a dick. Hollywood could suck a dick because at the end of the day, they need to go watch Lone Survivor and fucking call whoever made that and say, how did you do that? 
So if you want a technical advisor, go find those guys and figure it the fuck out. I, I, I would have no idea how to create that intensity. Right, yeah. Like, w- when they're on set, like, filming it, they probably think that intensity's there. Yeah. Like, these guys probably thought, man, this is intense. There's things blowing up. There's all this stuff. But it's like, it's not about explosions. They're fucking Lone Survivor with that one snap. Oh fuck! Yeah, it's the, it's more than just the actors. Like the way it's shot. Yeah. Like the camera angles, the the sound guy, like the way they do the sound effects, like all of that needs to come together. Yeah. And this one, they just they're all doing their own separate thing, and then somebody just like they, put it all together. Yeah, the they end. put it all together, and unfortunately, they're left with what they got. And I hate to keep bringing up Lone Survivor, but I just love it that much. And thir- well, not just Lone Survivor. Thirteen Hours did a great mm-hmm. job. What are some other ones that did that fucking nailed it? Is it only Lone Survivor and so, Thirteen Hours? So I actually think. Have you ever seen the show Seal Team? No. And I know we actually get a lot of comments on that. I think Seal Team does a pretty good job. But Seal Team also has a lot of heavy hitters, like either on the show, producing the show, or advising the show. A lot of Tier One guys, a lot of like SF guys, a lot of Seals. So they got a lot of legit guys there. So they do a pretty good job as well. I just don't know because it's like, let's say they called and we're like, hey. Buck, you've been shot at, you know, you've almost been shot multiple times. Come tell us how to do it. I would show up on the movie set and be like, okay, whoa, how do I tell you how to do it? Mm-hmm. Like, I can get a gun and shoot at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how, I, I don't know how else to get it. Like, it's like, how do you portray a feeling? Right, how, exactly. Like, I don't know how to make you capture it's that. like, you can put all the pieces in the right places, but yeah. you still got to capture the emotion right. and, and just the intensity and all of that. And so a lot of like a lot of our fellow peers are technical advisors on these movies. Like we've got messages from technical advisors, like, "Hey, that was the movie that I did." Like mm-hmm. we've gotten those messages, yeah. and it's like, I don't blame you. You yeah. told them what gear to put on. You told them what movements to make. You told them how to run for cover. You told them when to shoot. It's up to the people, the, the videographer or the the cinematographer, and the director to capture the feeling and all that stuff. So I don't know. You know, yeah. But when you get it right, it's gold. Jarhead's another one that they got right in a different mm-hmm. direction. Jarhead was not aiming to capture the emotion of the gunfight as much as they were aiming to capture the emotion of mundane boringness, yeah. mm-hmm. and they fucking nailed it. <laughs> Look at my guy pulling uh, six security. Look at his finger. It's on the trigger the whole time. This, My this, guy is standing This guy like is this. fucking wired tight. He's, like, ah, he's going to sneeze. And... I'm pretty sure even Pam said this. My wife said this when she was watching the movie with me. She was like, don't you think he just shot all his bullets? <laughs> he's, his finger is so tight on the trigger. He just like out of ammunition and doesn't know it yet. <laughs> The trigger's completely it's depressed. It's completely depressed, dude. He's like this on the trigger. It's not like this. It's not like this. It's just depressed. <laughs> he had already dumped all his mags, and he just stuck like that the whole time. Uh, that's funny. And, and like, honestly, that shit's real. But anyway, all right, guys. So there, there, there. There we go. All right, there. All right, guys. There is Jarhead Law of Return, the shittiest, one of the shittiest fucking movies I've seen in a long time for war movies. And unfortunately, we got a few, but we do have some really, really good ones coming. Mazul is fucking dope, dude. Mazul, yeah. Dude, it's sick. I loved it, loved it, loved it. So, that was Jarhead Law of Return. It is shitty. I don't know the right answer for people getting war movies right. Maybe war movies are going to phase out, though. Now that we're coming out of war, um, you know, 20 plus years of being in war... Over you know two decades of war, maybe with it's not cool anymore. People are you know desensitized. It's not sexy like it yeah. was, which you know is probably a good thing, yeah. right? Because a lot of people they look at, at war as being like this romantic idea, and they don't understand that war is fucking brutal and it's mm-hmm. ugly, and that's because of you know it, we've been in it so long, all the video games, all the movies. So you know we'll see. Maybe it's a good thing. It'll it'll transition. I'm sure they're not going to go away. They're just yeah. going to transition and maybe fade out for a little bit, but they'll be back. But we did a video on psyops. And PSYOP. Apparently there's no S. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. And those guys got so pissed at us. But you know what? The joke's on us. Because in the next year or so, and probably in the, in the future, the wars are going to be transitioning to online. 
So all of this gear out, fucking nods, SF guy, shoot him up, cool guy. Our time is probably over. End of an era. It's end of an era. And, and we're going to watch it phase out. The real cool guys are going to be the ones on computers yep. stopping our bank accounts from getting depleted to zero. Those are going to be the next cool guys. And our generation of shooters is just going to fucking go away. And it's going to you know, live in these some good, mostly shitty movies. It'll be old. Back in my day. We used to shoot at the people. Let her roll up your sleeves. You ain't even got any damn tattoos, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't got no tattoos on your fingers? You bitch. <laughs> we used to tattoos ourselves and shoot at these motherfuckers. Now you guys just cancel their accounts. <laughs> That's, that's going to be the cool uh, thing. They're going to be going to bars, and they're going to have their fucking Psyop logos in the bars instead of Psyop. <laughs> and they're just going to be like, bro, I canceled seven accounts last month. <laughs> and that shit fucking affects me, man. <laughs> you know how many millions of dollars that I stopped from uh, getting spent? I deleted so much Bitcoin, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many people work for that Bitcoin, man? <laughs> and I took it away. I did that. And you did that. You're my brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We got to end this shit because we got three more to do. We'll see you guys on the next Beers and Breakdowns. <laughs> I love that. With somehow, we got in to talk shit about PSYOP again. But make them the cool guys. April and I did it in one of the videos that we did, too. Did you? Oh. If your dream has become a Green Beret, then you need all the help you can get. We have an upcoming seminar held by Green Berets in San Antonio, Texas on November 12th. We will break down exactly what you need to be preparing for, the mental aspects, the physical aspects, and make sure that you have everything you need to get selected the first time. We'll work on team building exercises and make sure that you guys know the importance of working together as a team and what is expected of you in SFAS.